next up, we have uh, Justin Moon. He's uh, in, an instructor at the Build Buildle Bootcamp, and his talk is about teaching the next generation of Bitcoin developers. Please give him a warm round of applause. Uh, so my, my presentation, and I'm going to maybe go a little quicker because I don't want to repeat anything Jimmy said. Uh, so I might skip a few parts. But my, my presentation is more about like where, uh, not necessarily teaching the next generation, but where are we going to find the next generation of Bitcoin developers? What are the incentives that would uh, lead someone along this path? And how can we uh, foster those incentives to make uh, Bitcoin better and to help uh, Bitcoin users? So yeah, first off, you know, in quotes, uh, we need more Bitcoin developers. I think everyone agrees, so I'm just going to assume this is true. Uh, like, I think, you know, I've, I've heard this for as long as I've been in Bitcoin. I've read about arguments about this, you know, for years prior. We could use more uh, user-facing applications. We could use more, uh, you know, custody solutions. We could use better uh, testing on Bitcoin Core, all these things. Uh, so l let's just assume that's true. Why, why is this problem, why doesn't this problem go away? We, we kind of repeat this year after year. Uh, you know, wh why can't we get the number of developers we'd like to have? And so the first thing is, uh, is uh, you know, it's often quoted that there's a really steep learning curve, right? You need to understand cryptography, first of all. Uh, and cryptography is hard and involves a lot of math, which is, uh, you know, for a lot of, for a lot of people is, uh, is difficult. Uh, you need computer networking, which is, is also complicated. You kind of need to figure out how the internet works and uh, how protocol engineering works. And I mean, these are two massive fields by themselves. And then you got to learn about kind of distributed systems and uh, you know, how Bitcoin reaches consensus. And the idea is you have to understand all this before you can uh, contribute to Bitcoin. And uh, I think, you know, so on and so forth. There's many more things you could talk about. And I think this is probably mostly true for protocol development, you know, if you're actually uh, changing Bitcoin Core. But I think it's mostly false for application development. And, uh, you know, the vast majority of uh, new Bitcoin programmers will be building applications on top of the protocol, uh, you know, for how to store your coins, how to run your full node, uh, how to do payments over the Lightning Network, stuff like that. And so I think for most, for most of the uh, developers we would like to bring into the ecosystem, this isn't actually true. They could learn a little bit of one of these things and start contributing. Uh, and so, so yeah, I, I don't think this is a good explanation of why we're running short on developers. Uh, I think a, a, a good question to ask here is what is the payoff they'd get by deciding to uh, become a Bitcoin developer? Why would somebody, why, when, when is it rational to make this choice? Uh, I think most people learn skills to get jobs, right, to increase their income. Uh, is this a reasonable expectation here in Bitcoin uh, in, in terms of development? And I would say probably not. Uh, there aren't a lot of jobs. For example, Cold Card, the new hardware wallet company, uh, is basically run by two people. One guy does all the, the technical work. BitMEX is a few hundred uh, employees and is doing billions of dollars in revenue. Uh, BitPay was a profitable a uh, company that was, uh, they, they probably still are, you know, employing a lot of people. And, uh, you know, there was an open source clone called BTC Pay Server that came along, and I'm sure cut into their growth quite a lot. So there's always this threat of being commoditized by open source. Uh, and, you know, this reduces the number of jobs in the ecosystem, and uh, it sort of, you know, makes this incentive of, you know, landing a job kind of, I think, less compelling for a lot of new people. Uh, and so here's one of our great Bitcoin developers, Luke Dash Jr., uh, you know, tweeting, it was a couple months ago, I'm now at eight months with no success in finding new funding for my work on Bitcoin. Uh, and he's made many great, you know, he, I think he kind of like uh, originated with the, the BIP process. He runs the BIP process, Bitcoin improvement process, uh, or, and, uh, you know, helped deploy SegWit. Amazing developer. Uh, and as a result, had to redirect more attention towards paid work and less on Bitcoin itself. So like if you're a prospective Bitcoin developer, uh, this is really discouraging. Someone that's so good can't find a job, and sometimes Luke doesn't do himself any favors. He's a little disagreeable, but uh, he's an amazing developer. And uh, I think this is kind of uh, some evidence. Both of these are, you know, uh, evidence that there's, you know, there aren't a lot of Bitcoin jobs, and so maybe this isn't something we should be pitching to perspective. We shouldn't, we shouldn't promise this as a payoff. Uh, and look at the other side. You have a guy like Dan Larimer, uh, uh, similar, maybe similar technical skills, and. Uh, you know, he, he has no trouble finding jobs, but not on Bitcoin. 
he makes uh, altcoins, we'll call them uh, in, in this room, altcoins. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, he makes a ton of money. And uh, if we're going to train people with a uh, expect, if we're, gonna, if we're gonna invite people in to become Bitcoin developers, train them under, with the expectation that they'll be able to you know, find a job very easily, I think they'll just end up doing this. They'll just end up going and making competitors to Bitcoin, which is kind of what we don't want. Uh, so this gets to what I do. I, uh, like a year ago, I got into Bitcoin. I took Jimmy's class, which was kind of what got me interested. Did a hackathon. It was awesome. And so uh, I was sort of disappointed that there weren't, weren't more resources. And I'm, I'm a former programmer, so I started uh, on weekends. I would do this like video call with uh, former uh, people I'd met at conferences, right? And so I just like taught, teach them what I did that week. And slowly it built, and I uh, opened it up, and it, you know kind of announced online. I got 300 people to sign up for a first, uh, a first free version of what I call Biddle Boot Camp. It's just like a month-long online Bitcoin programming course. And my expectation was that a bunch of programmers like me would sign up, and I would teach them about Bitcoin, right? Pretty simple. Uh, and it was funny. So uh, people signed up, obviously, 300, and I started, you know, the course started going along, and, and the questions were all very simple. Uh, they didn't involve how Bitcoin worked. They involved how Python worked, the language we were using. They involved how a terminal works. They were all very basic programming competency questions. And so it turned out that I didn't teach Bitcoin to programmers. I was teaching programming to Bitcoiners, which was the exact kind of opposite of like what I expected to do. And I think this is the thing, this is the big thing I want to share with you, if you remember one thing about from my talk is that the, the, the big thing I've learned in the last six months is that uh, it, it's about why these, these hodlers, these Bitcoiners, signed up. And uh, I think this, is, this kind of sums it up. Another tweet by Nick Ledoyer, the creator of BTC Pay Server. So this is a guy who you know, works on Bitcoin as a volunteer, uh, you know, building an open source version of BitPay. Uh, and you know, people assume he's making a sacrifice for Bitcoin. He says, I sometimes heard about developer sacrifices for Bitcoin. Personally, I don't. It turns out that coding on Bitcoin is my best strategy to protect my own wealth. And I think this is kind of, uh, this gets to the point of why these hodlers uh, signed up for a Bitcoin programming class, why they signed up for Jimmy's class uh, in the bear market. Uh, it's odd that, you know, probably to a person, everyone who takes my class owns Bitcoin already. I didn't assume that would be true. It's, it's very surprising. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of only you can protect yourself in Bitcoin. You're responsible for your own private keys. You're responsible to validate transactions. And there's no lender of last resort. If, if you lose your coins on exchange, you don't, you know, I mean, they never were your coins, actually. You, you, you made a conceptual mistake and you're in trouble. So uh, I think this, is, this explains why these hodlers were uh, signing up for a Bitcoin programming class, even though they didn't know how to program. Uh, and so there's two ways I'll, I'll kind of frame this. One is we always talk to, to uh, new Bitcoin users about uh, you know, whether, when they, we're talking about whether they should buy or not. We say, do your own research, right? I'm not going to tell you whether you should buy. You should do your own research. I think Bitcoin programming is like this. Oftentimes, for people own some, and maybe they want to own more. Or maybe they own some, and it appreciated, and now they are uncomfortable with how much they own. Uh, and they want to understand it better uh, now that it is the vast majority of their wealth. So like, for example, what is a private key? A lot of Bitcoin users don't know this. Uh, a lot of crypto enthusiasts have no idea what a private key actually is. It's just a number. Uh, what does a full node do? We're, we're told to run a full node, but I think many of us don't know what a full node actually does. And by interacting with one in a programming context, you have a much better understanding. Lastly, who controls Bitcoin? Like, what is this GitHub thing? Where, where does the code come from? Uh, this is a hard thing to understand if you don't uh, engage a little bit with it. Another way to frame Bitcoin programming, uh, the, ins the motivation that the people I've worked with, I've trained 100 people now in six months, uh, what's the motivation uh, that's leading them to take this class? I think the other one, besides do your own research, is self-defense. Uh, uh, they have decided they're going to hodl their Bitcoin and, until you know, the moon rises or the sun sets, and, uh, and they want to protect it, right? And so, you know, to kind of take some analogs from these, you know, now that you know what a private key is, how can you protect yours? Uh, you know, doing a little programming will, will inform this. Uh, how do you put your full node to work? Like, when you understand what a full node does, how can you kind of write software to interact with it? Uh, and how do you participate in governance? You know, you get on GitHub, you start making some, 
some, uh, you know, reading some code, reviewing some code, commenting. Uh, you, under you, know, you can actually help pilot the ship to the small extent you're able. And lastly, this is the big thesis, is I think hodlers are an untapped technical asset for, uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, they have an intimate knowledge of bad user experience. So for example, uh, you know, one of my students uh, was a doc, or was a, well, yeah, one was a doctor who loved fiddling with, uh, you know, open source hardware, uh, like full nodes, little node in a box, right, like the CASA node. And over six months after he took my class, he's now the, one of the main contributors to Raspi Blitz. It's kind of the popular open source node in a box. You just you know, kind of run a script and now you have a full node on a $35 or $50 piece of hardware. Uh, another one was a, an attorney who was, uh, would accept Bitcoin payments for, uh, for his business. And he was frustrated that you couldn't sync these transactions to his accounting software. Uh, and so he built a, a plugin for BTC Pay Server to do this. And I would argue that, you know, we talk about, you know, improving the UX for Bitcoin. I don't think we need designers to do that oftentimes. We need to help the users who've encountered problems fix these problems themselves. Uh, and it's not that unreasonable. A lot of these problems can be solved with just some basic programming skills. Uh, it'll help keep Bitcoin cypherpunk. You know, Bitcoin has these founding ideals uh, around kind of uh, freedom and... Uh, and as Bitcoin becomes more popular, we'll have people join that might not share these ideals. And so it's like, kind of like what Jimmy said, we want to empower the users to, uh, to stick around and contribute more in the future. Uh, and lastly, they're, they're motivated, they just need a hand. So my, my, what I'm hoping is you know, maybe the next generation of Bitcoin developers are already among us, they're the hodlers. Uh, they just don't know it yet. They haven't learned to code, they haven't started contributing yet. So thanks for listening. Thank you.